Thank you so much, Colonel. And I will dissent that it was dissenting because it's really the reality of the of the, of the matter. If you look at the sectors, uh, I show greenfield investment that mostly go into productive sector. In developing countries, they will have, this will affect mostly manufacturing. More than two thirds will be manufacturing or manufacturing related sectors. In developed countries, we know developed countries are services economy, so three quarters will be the services sectors and, and then manufacturing and the impact on agriculture will be minimal, so it's important. And it's something that we address in the, in the policy chapter of the report, and it's, it's a valid point. Related to the institutional point that you can raise the issue of that, the adjustment cost can be very costly if the assessment is not, pros is not done properly, and then if the implementation is not properly. So we need more research. Yuka said it was uh, the research is very thin, and we experienced that when doing the work, when doing the work with with Michael. Most of the work has been done for advanced countries, the U.S. and and few European countries. So we hope we can partner more in the process, in the road towards implementation. If uh, um, I think it, we need to work more closely with academia in this setting, especially for developing and least developed countries. I will not take more time. I think we have some time to open the floor for questions. Later, perhaps we can have one or two minutes to come back if you want to make an additional point. So if there is any question from the floor, please tell us to which panel is the question is addressed. There are many students here that I'm sure have many questions. Hello and thank you. Um, I know um, you gave the disclaimer at the beginning, Amelia, that you didn't have analysis on distributional impact. But given that it's an inequality conference, I was wondering whether any of you have any uh, any, any thoughts, any insights on what the distributional impacts of this could be? Thanks. So from my side, I, so I'm Carlos Gradin, uh, you know why the researcher. Uh, my question would be in terms of, of the impact of this um, new tax minimum on developing countries, maybe identify, so what are your expectations in terms of what countries, specific countries would be more, given the, their history or, or, or their possibilities to um, attract more investment or not, or, or use other, compensate maybe the higher taxes with other um, ways of attracting foreign investment. What countries would you think are the most, are benefiting the most from this uh, minimum tax? And what countries are the, those uh, with, uh, uh, that will be uh, worsen, see worsen their, their situation. And maybe in particular Colombia, what do you think about Colombia? Okay, we can, we can come back. Uh, do you want to take the, the distributional qu uh, question? You can go first. Okay, so. well, and I mean, <laughs> in terms of the channels, I mean, we have done previously other analysis on general impact of NDI, oh, FDI on, on development, and one of them is through the, the gender, I mean, uh, through the gender mechanism, how multinationals affect gender policies and practices and different aspects of the labor market. But the labor market is the, the, the entry point here uh, to analyze in addition to other structural factors as, as um, as Juca said, uh, as I said at the beginning, the purpose, the entry point of UNCTAD into this analysis was to see what are the implications for countries that will need to change the rules of game. The playing field, w the playing field will change for developing countries. So what they need to do uh, in terms of uh, investment policy adjustment, fiscal policy adjustment to adapt to this new environment. But I do agree that the, in terms of the distributional impact, we'll have to look at uh, the, what we do in terms of the general FDI and development FDI and growth to look at the labor markets, especially the labor market channel. Uh, as I said, we did some work, but not in the context of the tax reform uh, on multinational and gender, and there is the technology, the, the mechanism, the, <coughs> the learning, 
like the case of Costa Rica, for example, there is a positive spillover in the, into the local economy uh, from multinationals. Uh, there is the competition effect and there is the value chain effect, for example, in the case of Bangladesh, that uh, women with female managers tend to advance more in the labor market. So there are mechanisms there that we have, uh, that perhaps we can use those as a starting point where there is data. Because again, there is the issue. We will have to. Uh, we need to be conscious of the data and the uh, and, and the uh, and the knowledge, the, the local knowledge. But I do agree that that will be the next step after we solve the puzzles of how they curve out, what is the optimal level, how will be calculated, and then how will be implemented, and what will be the new incentive package of the of developing countries. Uh, just very briefly on the distributional impacts. Of course, what also matters is the um, what happens to the revenue, and that could actually be uh, 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 have greater impacts on. So, if it's used on, on quality services or, or social cash transfers, then I mean the distributional impacts can very, very well be quite progressive, even if some of the workers would 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 would, uh, would not benefit because of the incidents that I that I brought. No, I see. I agree with both you and you, Amelia. I think the question is that you know the problem here is that there is a, and this is why Carlos, uh, you know, it's the very important work that Carlos is doing, the across country inequality uh, and within country, right? They are two different, you know, issues as we know from the what we heard yesterday in the policy plenary. And I think it's not obvious which way inequality will go, both across and within country, right? Um, I mean, within country. One would assume, as we were saying, it could be progressive in this because if you use the tax revenues or public service and so on. Across country, it's not obvious because we're not sure how exactly investment is going many is possible to be to the global minimum tax and where exactly will they go for. As I said, if it is a, the concern is that they move away from the Bangladeshis of the world or the Cambodians of the world, then there is a concern that you know this will lead to higher across country inequality. And I am a little bit concerned about that. That's, before I give the floor to Colombia to add, uh, I, I will give the and I think this is the, the the issue. I mean, we know that there will be divestment from from uh, between low and high um, uh, tax countries, but then linked to your question, which countries, developing countries, will that affect? As we saw, this affects around 70 percent of productive investment, foreign investment in developing countries. And in countries like in regions like Africa, will be around 90 percent. So we are talking about that those countries where 90 percent of export-oriented, productive-oriented investment relies on these multinationals, changing the the playing field will have its implications. As I said, our estimations are conservative globally between two around two percent on the negative impact. But you are right; it might be different depending on the country and depending on the circumstances. Uh, Luis mentioned that the difference between the effective and statutory is not that big. So perhaps you can <laughs> elaborate a little bit more in the case of Colombia. No, it, this is for 2021. The, this is different between the, the information that you show for 1970. No? But uh, the, the source of these effective rights is from US Treasury and old city community. Let me let me refer some point about the, the question. Um, really, in practice, uh, attract foreign investment through the taxes, through the rates, and through the venues is very difficult and has an important restriction, which is the the, the, the revenues, the, the need for for the government to finance the expenditures. Um, really. Um, it, 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 for the Colombian government, it's difficult because 40% of the total tax revenue come from the companies. And it, it's impossible to substitute with natural persons uh, or, or consumption taxes. And this is, a for, uh, this is a hard restriction. Really, today, in, in the Congress, is voting the, the new tax reform. In, in this tax reform, the, the taxes for some companies, for instance, for the meaning oil companies, the, the tax are go up, and uh, some benefits that I described in the slides are reducing. In, in practice, the tools for, for tax competition are to attract investment for, for the government is no easy, really. Thank you so much. Any other comment, uh, question? Yes. Thank you. 
Yes, um, for Ignacio, I would like you know what is your opinion about the current uh, Colombian uh, tax um, reform project and its possible impact on foreign investment? Yes, because one of the purposes is to eliminate many uh, benefits, uh, tax benefits for companies. So maybe you have any analysis? Okay, good morning. Uh, I think it was Ignacio who said that uh, the tax the reduction, no, the well, this restriction in the taxes uh, is a second order like factor that affects investment. So I, th I, I believe in Colombia, maybe one of the main factors that could affect uh, the foreign direct investment, it is the wages flexibility, because as it has been discussed to the to these days, to these days. Uh, the flexibility in the wages here is very low. There, there are a lot of restrictions, and uh, as I understand, the, when a um, foreign company comes to Colombia, uh, this foreign company, I suppose, it is mainly formal. So they will be, uh, they, they, they will be completely affected by by the restrictions in the laboral market that we we have here. I don't know if this, uh, apart from that, there are infrastructure, like how are the state of the, of the uh, streets, and a lot of other things that can explain the for that aid investment. So I don't know if this has also extended to another measures, or if this will only try to uh, take investment to, from offshore countries to other countries, or if these have, I don't know, use it other areas that also affect investment. Um, thank you so much. That's, I think, very, very valid question because as Kunal said, there are important determinants of FDI. What drives FDI into, I mean, there is efficiency seeking, there is market seeking FDI. There are different motives what FDI moves into, into what multinationals invest into other countries. And those that you are, that you mentioned are fundamentals is the the labor force, the quality of institutions, the infrastructure. Those add or attract to the the cost of, of of having FDI into a country. In terms of this reform, the reform concerns the corporate income tax, the tax pays paid, uh, pays, uh, paid by multinationals. It does not cover other incentives, but it will have an impact because countries will have to rely more and have to upgrade the national base to attack to attract FDI, given that tax tax is not enough, tax competition will not be enough, but we are completely right and that complements the, the comment on Kunal on the, on the fundamentals of the country and uh, to, to, to attract foreign direct investment. I will stop here, I know that uh, there is lunch and there are other sessions after, but I will give the panel one minute each of 50 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, if you want to finalize or to answer his question. Maybe and give a short answer for the, the question. Thank you very much. Really, it's a preliminary exercise, you know? We can omit or exclude the variables for the labor market, that is important, institutional variables, that is also important. And really, I try to, 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 to do some crucial factors according to the, to the theory of the growth, the, 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 the long-term growth. Now that you have the mic. <laughs> no, this uh, this way here. Okay, good. <laughs> no, nothing to add, really. I mean, I mean, it will be. This is this is super useful work. What uh, what you have done, and uh, hopefully you'll be following up now closely when when it starts to be implemented. So, looking forward to further reports. Thank you so much, and it's uh, important to read that Wider has done national papers on the on the issue that we can we can look at and use as a basis. Kunal, 30 seconds. No, I, I just think that you know the agenda that uh, Amelia and the Untad report has set forward is very important and particularly important here in this. Uh, I think there are many students here. I think, and you know because there are really great research topics from all these questions, right? We, which we are which we are trying to grapple with. Uh, you know, issues about distribution questions, about growth versus uh, growth versus uh, you know or what the minimum tax do to 
on economic growth versus inequality, at the country level, you know, institutions, so on. All these are really important questions, and which you know we I think the literature FDI. This is again coming from a non-tax perspective. The literature FDI and its implication, development implications, kind of stopped a little bit. I haven't we haven't seen the kind of work we earlier saw earlier. This has been really good work. So maybe this is a different approach, an entry point, thinking about how does the minimum tax, global minimum tax and taxation itself affect the sort of overall development question. So that will be really great if some of you start thinking about research topics. There's now very good data, micro data on FDI for many countries. And think about this in a concrete empirical way, because that's what I think we need. We don't have yet an evidence base to answer some of these questions. There was more than 30 seconds earlier, sorry. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You gave us research ID and some tweets. <laughs> thank you very much and thank you for coming to, to the session.